Welcome back. In this session, I want to teach you a bit about polygons in ArcGIS. And one way you can make test polygons is by using the Create Fishnet tool. So, for example, I use uh, output feature class. I'll call it four squares dot shape. And then basically we define for each square how wide it is, how high it is, and then how many rows and how many columns. And then down at the bottom, there's a drop down and we want to create polygons. So a polygon will be different than a polyline in that a polygon has an area property as opposed to a polyline it simply has a length property but no area. Okay, and the other parameters with the Create Fishnet tool is where is the origin? So I'll say x of 0, y of 0, and then how do you want your y-axis? So in this case, it'll be at, at a y of 1, so my fishnet will actually be rotated so north won't be straight up and down. So the result is we've got our rotated fishnet because I specified that when I ran the tool. Okay, and there's also a tool, Create Random Points, and under this Constraining Feature class, if we specify four squares, then within each square, we'll have 30 randomly located points. So the result is within each square, we have 30 randomly located points. And the random points have the original feature ID from the four polygons. So we can symbolize these random points by the original polygon feature ID. So we give a different marker symbol based on the original polygon feature ID. So you see indeed we have these points symbolized by the original polygon feature ID. Okay, there's another tool, Minimum Bounding Geometry, which will allow you to create polygons from a cloud of points. So in this case, what we're going to do is use a list. So for every different CID value, give us the envelope of that cloud of points. So for example, this would be the first um, cloud of points, the next cloud of points, etc. There'll be a feature envelope around each of those cloud of points. So the result is a feature envelope or basically the extent of each point's cloud. So for example, the points with original feature ID 0, here's the envelope. So all it does is find the point with the minimum x, a point with the minimum y, a point with the maximum y, and a point with the maximum x. So for each cloud of points, we've got the feature envelope. So using that tool, minimum bounding geometry, there's a drop down where you've got these options. You could do rectangle by area. So give us this rectangle, the smallest area. So that's basically the same thing as the envelope in this case. Rectangle by width. So give us the rectangle with the small width enclosing the input points or a circle, the smallest circle that surrounds the input points or a convex hull, the smallest convex polygon enclosing the input points. So we'll do it one more time. This time we'll use convex hull. So the result is these four polygons as a convex hull around these clouds of points. Okay, let's go back to our original four squares polygons and we'll label each polygon using the field ID and then label features in this layer. So in this case, I arbitrarily calculated the field ID to be one for these two polygons. So what we could do is, in this case, we've got four polygons. So if we look at the attribute table, we've got four polygons. We could make a two polygon layer or two polygon feature class by dissolving based on ID. So to do that, we use the dissolve tool. And basically, we specify what field, if it's the same value, the same ID, will dissolve those polygons. 
And then down here, we'll create multi-part features so the polygons don't even have to be connected. As long as they have the same ID field, they'll become this part of the same polygon. So the result is two polygons. So here is the first polygon. It's actually composed of two parts. So this is the first part of the polygon, and this is the second part of the polygon. And this is a second polygon. So this is the first part of the polygon and the second part of the polygon. So if we go back to our original four squares, what's the area of each of these squares? So right mouse click on this double precision field and calculate geometry. So the area of each square is 10,000. We could do the same thing with our multi-part polygons. And once again, right mouse click on a double precision field, calculate geometry, area. So this is the area of our first polygon, and it's composed of two parts. So this part would have an area of 10,000, and this part would have an area of 10,000. So the total area of the two parts is the area of our polygon. In this case, it'll be 20,000. Okay, so we could always go from a multi-part polygon to a single-part polygon using this tool, multi-part to single-part. So basically, we just give it dissolve and then what we want our output to be. And what I'll do is for every part for this polygon, those parts will become separate polygons with an ID of zero. And for every part for this polygon, they'll become separate polygons with an ID of one. Okay, so we do have now four polygons and they do have IDs of zero and one. And once again, since I output to a shape file, it was not smart enough to update the area. It just kept the original area. So we always have to update the area whenever we're working with shape files after we do geoprocessing like this. So right mouse click, calculate geometry, and we'll get the correct area for every polygon. So if I go to properties and numeric, give us one to the right of the decimal. So it is 10,000, the area of every polygon, and we have four of them. Okay, so that's probably enough about polygons, and we'll stop right there.